So it cannot be true that these uh, people are shot unprovoked. Defending police violence, a disturbing trend in KZN. A site rarely seen, a high-level corruption accused politician in the dock. The millionaire royals with not a penny to spare for their subjects. And using pigs' organs to keep human beings alive. A world first for medicine and us. Hello, I'm Jane Dutton. This is Eyewitness News. A day after resigning as National Assembly Speaker, Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula appeared in the Pretoria Magistrate Court this morning. Dressed in a gold and blue three-piece kente outfit, she cast a forlorn figure alone in the dark. Behind her, her husband Charles Ngakula, former Deputy President Balega Mbete, and other close friends. Mapisa Ngakula faces 12 counts of corruption and one of money laundering relating to 4.5 million rand in kickbacks she allegedly received from a defense contractor when she was defense minister. Earlier, her lawyers argued that sending Mapisa Ngakula, who was once a correctional services minister, to prison would infringe on her constitutional rights. She's also denied having interfered with tender processes. Mapisa Ngakula will return to court on the 4th of June. Tabi Sokoba, Eyewitness News. The question of whether or not Speaker of Parliament, Speaker of the National Assembly, Nusivir Mapisa Ngakula, will find a way in the dock has not been answered. In fact, that matter has not been postponed until June. I also believe that watching today's proceedings and that image, that image of her in the dock is something that she really tried hard to fight. But it was inevitable all along anyway. Speak to people in the legal fraternity or even those in the ANC. There was no other way around this particular matter but to appear in the dock. So the image you try to fight off, pointless exercise. Um, it is out there. My thoughts about what this moment means, I mean, Yo, Nosivuye Mapisa Ngakula is one of the most senior politicians. Think about it. I mean, I grew up seeing her as a child, as a political figure in the country. She has served multiple times across multiple cabinets, has served in different departments. So this is somebody with clout. When you think about Umam Nosivuye Mapisa Ngakula, the way I'd often refer to her on the field, is here's somebody who easily asserts herself able to articulate what she wants or doesn't want, is actually also quite stubborn. And here you are today seeing her having to answer to these graft allegations. It's alleged she received more than 4.5 million rand in kickbacks from a defence contractor when she was the defence minister. The DA says she still needs to answer for unilaterally hiking the salary by 70% of the Secretary of Parliament without MPs' knowledge. They take police on. There is one way of responding if the police are taken on, is, 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 is the way that they are taken on by those criminals. Fielding legitimate questions about police violence. After nine suspects were shot and killed in Marion Hill in KZN on Wednesday in a shootout with police. Police also killed five people believed to be cash in transit robbers in Witbank today. Eight others were arrested and nine managed to flee the scene. There are visible bullet holes at the door of the house where the alleged nine suspected criminals were shot and killed by police yesterday morning. According to police, their stabilization team had received a tip off of the suspects' whereabouts. They say upon arrival, they were met with gunfire and then they had to return. This resulted in a gunfight which killed the nine suspected criminals. Police Minister Peggy Taylor visited the Marian Hill Police Station today. After his meeting with the police top brass, he visited the Desai community in a bid to get the frustrations from community members. However, not even a single community member spoke about their concerns as they fear for their safety. Police Minister Peggy Keller said they would be afforded an opportunity to speak to the police privately. We do know that IPAD is now investigating this incident, something that Police Minister Peggy Keller has now welcomed. Eyewitness News. Reporting from the Desai community in Marian Hill. The 
the super rich living alongside the poorest of the poor. The picture of Kwanongoma in rural northern KwaZulu-Natal, home to six of the seven palaces belonging to the Zulu monarchy. The community there say they're not benefiting at all and accuse the provincial government of spending millions of rands on the royal family while they languish in poverty. Mandla Moses Matembo says this neglect is in part responsible for the tension and unrest in the area. Kaiser Chiefs has expressed sadness at the killing of their player Luke Fleurs. Fleurs was killed in a hijacking on Wednesday night when the suspects made off with his vehicle. The defender signed for the Soweto Giants in October 2023, and while he was yet to represent the club in an official match, he was earmarked as a star for the future. Uh, we were looking at uh, great things uh, to happen uh, with a look in the club at the uh, age of 24, having played for other clubs as well, including uh, Super Sport United and having made the national uh, team colors at the Olympics. This is a potential that is taken too soon from us. Four teachers from the last school, Queenswood in Pretoria, will be charged by the Gauteng Education Department with gross negligence, as recommended by a law firm appointed to investigate the death of Latoya Temelton. Nchupetsang attorneys revealed its findings into the drowning incident that killed the 12-year-old pupil in January earlier today. It was found that there was little supervision from the teachers during the excursion. The law firm says only the learners and camp facilitators could account for what happened on the day. All the educators they could not see, including the principal, they could not see how Latoya drowned, but however, they could only give account after Latoya has, has drowned. In a world first, U.S. surgeons have successfully transplanted a genetically modified pig kidney into a living patient, a procedure that could help address the chronic shortage of donor organs. The four-hour operation was carried out on a 62-year-old man suffering from end-stage kidney disease. The pig kidney used for the transplant was provided by a Massachusetts biotech company called eGenesis and had been genetically edited to remove harmful pig genes and add certain human genes. That's it from me, Jane Dutton, and the rest of the team. Thanks for watching. Eyewitness News. In touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.